about 12 years ago, I uh, was experiencing some pain when I was working out, about right over here, which is typically not what you would find from normal heart pain. So I went to my doctor anyway and said to him, um, I'm, ha I'm experiencing this pain, you know, I, th I really am a little nervous about this, can we do, can we do some tests? Um, he said, sure, absolutely, wound up going ahead and starting me off doing the typical stress tests, uh, the nuclear stress tests, and um, everything showed up perfectly normal. I kind of persisted with him and said, you know, it would really be nice if, since the only way that you can really tell what's going on is if you go ahead and do a catheterization. It basically, the arteries look like straws, and when they're not, not in good shape, they look like they're twisted straws. And those twists are where the, uh, the blood doesn't get through and it doesn't give oxygen to the heart. I know I came from two parents that had bypass in their 70s, but here I was at 48 years of age, relatively good shape, and now I had a significant blockage that had I not pushed to get diagnosed, the chances are that I could have had a massive heart attack. I had my first stent put in, and uh, I wound up having a blockage further from that stent and needed another stent put in. This process went on, unfortunately, for about six months, where almost every other week I was back in the hospital having stents put in. So it was really, uh, for me, a matter of just being sick and tired of not getting a handle on it. I was not able to live my life. Um, and I said, whatever I need to do is what I'm going to do. And that's why I wound up at the University of Pennsylvania. It didn't take very long for him to look at me and basically tell me what my problem was. And that was the fact that not only did I have um, high LDL cholesterol, but I also had a condition known as LP little a elevation, which is a part of LDL cholesterol um, that was causing these particles to stick to the sides of the arteries of my heart, and that there was something that they could do about it, whereby they would take my blood out of my body, out of one arm, and they would filter it of all the fat, and then they would return it after cleaning it out to the other arm, and that I would walk out of the hospital after a few hours, and I would basically have clean cholesterol. Apheresis is not something that you can just go to any facility, any hospital, any outpatient clinic to get done. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are very few facilities across the country. And what I like about the, the faculty and the physicians at Penn um, is that they're always willing to talk to the patient and find out what's the best thing for the patient. Um, they kind of made it feel like I was uh, at home um, because everybody was so friendly. Uh, I, and I think that's so important as far as cardiovascular care is not feel like you're just a number but feel like you're actually um, somebody that they care about. So I, I live in Flemington, New Jersey, and uh, the trip to uh, Penn is about an hour and 45 minutes. So that was a commitment. But I really, again, believe that there, it's not a matter of, of settling for care. It's a matter of doing the right thing for yourself. There's two ways of dealing with it. Either you go into denial and forget about your disease, or you aggressively go after it. And I chose the second one, which was to aggressively go after my disease. That was the beginning of what I consider the beginning of the rest of my life because it literally has changed my whole outlook. And the last um, catheterization I had in 2010, my arteries literally reversed. Um, my, uh, they looked like wide open straws. There were, no, there were no areas that plaque could build up and I'm just celebrating my 60th birthday and uh, looking forward to many, many more years ahead. My life is worth Penn Medicine. Isn't yours?